Okay, everybody, welcome back. This is Light Liger, aka Crypto Enthusiast, and the year is very close, coming to an end, so I decided to do a tier list video for 2020. So which coins and tokens should you invest in 2020? Which ones are going to go up? Which ones are going to go down and doing exit scams, basically? And it goes without saying, I'm not a financial advisor. All of the opinions uh, represented in this video are mine, based on the data and the predictions that I have and promise of the projects in general, which ones I'm going to be thinking going to be going down, etc. And it doesn't have all the coins and tokens in this video because it would be too long. So I will be talking about mostly the key players, which ones are going to be interesting to look at. So let's get started. So first of all, we have the best percentage growth coins. And this row here has basically four different coins and obviously number one is bitcoin and it's pretty self-explanatory we had the halving coming on and it's just that the mainstream just kind of only knows bitcoin and many other people just don't know the brand awareness of other coins and bitcoin just has all the buzz really going around it so it's like the prime candidate to really go up and I don't think there's really much else explanation to be done there. Obviously, there are a portion of the people who are waking up on the aspect that there's not really much technology going around and development going around Bitcoin. There's obviously the lightning work coming out. It's not going to come out in 2020, though, but I think it is going to be um, still a relevant player. Next up, we have Binance Coin, and it goes without saying that what makes it a really, really good investment is just the buyback thing that they do quarterly or is it three, three or four times a year. So basically the amount of the supply goes down each time and that just increases the scarcity of this chain and makes it a, just a smaller supply, which inherently just grows your value. Obviously, the DFL tokens kind of break that idea because they've been plummeting in prices even though they've been deflating. But in case of Binance Coin, you have such a powerful chain already, which has use cases and used by many projects already. And it's basically one of the biggest exchanges. And I don't see any reason why Binance would be going down in 2020. I don't think they have any lawsuits coming up and etc. So it just makes a lot of sense that it won't be going anywhere. And its price is likely to gonna go up. Right now, it's pretty cheap to buy. So I've been accumulating a bit. Uh, sadly, I had to this year sell some of my supply, which I kind of regret now in retrospect. And But it's definitely the best exchange-based coin. And exchange-based coins are going to be a big key to 2020 and years to come. I think they are biggest. When you look at the all-time high reductions from people's coins, like how much they're down from the all-time high, many projects are like 99% or 95%. The majority of the exchange-based coins are roughly around 60%. And in grand scale of things, it's actually very low. So um, the exchange-based coins are one of the best ones to survive any types of um, bear markets and etc. So they, I think they're a good um, investment. Moving on, we have Leo. And Leo is the same principle as Binance, except it's burning on real time. And it's been, you know, on a pretty fast pace already because it's daily burns and more uh, there has been usage and etc. the more it burns. And but Bitfinex obviously had its fair share of problems. We're not going to lie about that. And they might go into a bit of problems. So it's a bit of a riskier take than Binance coin, but it burns faster and it burns real time, which you can track. So um, there's that. That's why it's also in the tier list. I think it's going to go up. Um, maybe not necessarily next year. I'm saying that the best percentage growth can be also meaning in the situation if we're going to be seeing a bear market next year, whole time, uh, it's going to be dropping the lowest probably. So I think Leo is one of the best like long-term investments that you can do along with every coin in this list um, on the first tier. And then we have Ultra. And Ultra is something already seeing growth in the last weeks. It's been like up 20% or something like that. Um, those who are not familiar with the project, I've done a video about it. It's basically a new gaming platform, which has a lot of partners already. Ubisoft, Bandai Namco, um, and a lot of other key players, which these names may not mean a lot of people who are not gamers, but gamers know those are big names. And this is basically going to become the decentralized theme where you can own your games and you can sell them afterwards in the marketplace 
after you're done with them. And it, the ecosystem has a lot of things which inherently like create the value. It is a mintable coin because every time that somebody converts fiat into ultra, more ultra coins are created, but that doesn't necessarily like drive down the value of the coin. Uh, I just see a lot of value with this project and it's most what I'm hyped about out of these. And I think right now it's still, it, it remains to be seen like how the implementation will be done. And there's a lot of legal things, obviously, but it has very high ceiling of promise. Gaming will be the number one way to mass adoption. I always say that every single time. And that's why I think Ultra belongs to the tier one. It's uh, something that I will be accumulating quite a lot. Sadly, it's not available on many exchanges right now, only two, which are pretty large one, Bitru and Bitfinex. Uh, in just in case, all of the links to buy these coins are links down below. So I have a lot of exchanges there in case you want to buy them. But let's move on to the second tier, which is the good growth, which I assume that they're going to be seeing some growth, but not necessarily high as the tier one. So Ethereum is here just because... Well, it's going a lot of updates in 2020. Uh, the Ethereum 2.0 or 3.0, which one is it? I can't remember, um, is going down and it's not going to happen in 2020, but we're going to be seeing at least two phases to it, which are going to be, um, we're going to be seeing the second chain. And in a way, we can see the normal Ethereum decrease, but the Ethereum 2, so to speak, will be having a higher price and maybe growing. So Ethereum is likely even maybe going to become the number one coin in the industry, not necessarily by market cap, just by usage and everything. So Ethereum has a very bright uh, future ahead of it. And I think it's a very good investment because the inflation rate is going to go like um, 10 times lower than it is right now through mining. But then again, a lot of the miners are going to move into some other project. And that might be um, another coin, which I will talk about in a second. But let's move on. We have KuCoin shares, so same principle as Leo and Binance. It's I think they also are burning their coins, but it's because it's one of the prominent exchanges in China. I think it's going to be a pretty good investment, especially because it accumulates dividends to you if you hold it on the exchange. And then you have Huobi and Bitmax, and they follow the same principle. They have been relatively um, resistant to the bear market in terms of percentage compared to a lot of other coins and projects. And that's why they belong to the better tier, their high tier uh, exchanges. And there's a lot of promise these uh, coins will become better. Then we have BAT, basic attention token has been doing a lot of adoption. Prave is just getting better. And when it becomes open for every advertiser, I believe um, the demand for it will be increasing, which will steer up the price or it may tank the price that's a possibility too but um i think we're going to be expecting more ads and we're going to be expecting a lot more merchants interested in being advertising on bat i think they're going to be doing a lot of um, upgrading on 2020 and i just see it like a really really good investment and it has been in 2019 it was actually the best performing coins along with like litecoin or something and i don't see any any a lot of reasons to it go down then we're moving into the next tier, which is the small gains um, list. And this is something they're going to be seeing a small increase. We're talking about maybe 5% or something like that. So we have Tron. So the news on the corner is that Tron is actually interested in buying Steemit. Might be up on the table. They might be doing a Tron implementation on Steemit. Or maybe they will do... A, I don't know, like uh, some type of a token, which is backed by Tron, many options there. And thing I, I wanted to say in the beginning, but I'm going to be saying now in 2020 and from beyond cross promotions and cross partnerships are going to be a big thing. We already see things like Tama Chain and Neo and Neo and Ontology cross chain um, into polarity or what is it, whatever is the word. Um, cross-chain like atomic swaps and all these type of things, they are going to become a lot more popular. And we're going to be seeing, you know, these companies and projects coming together and doing some like games which are going to be accepting and supporting all these tokens. This is going to become a thing. And it's going to be big. And I think Tron is going to be one of those projects which are going to be working with other projects in the crypto space, such as Steam, and maybe the BTT will also launch in 2020, don't know, but a um, lot of promise for Tron, uh, exactly. 
Um, then we have energy and energy 3.0, which is going to be the same as um, uh, able to support tokens. And well, you know, um, it's going to be able to support tokens and smart contracts. Everything that Ethereum is able to do, Energy is able to do. And basically, Energy is already having a high TPS and masternodes. So um, it's going to be a viable option for a lot of developers. And obviously, it has all that treasury system already in play, which has very, very nice implications to it. And even though they did this whole airdrop thing, they dropped out massive amounts of money. I was one of them. And the price didn't tank. It actually went up. And Energy 3.0 is just going to be increasing the price up and up because, well, it's pretty simple that, you know, you are launching these massive capabilities to your chain, going this massive upgrade. I think that it's going to be increasing the value. Then we have Loom Network. It has a lot of things going on for it. Um, you can read a more detailed description. I think it's one of the better promising projects on Ethereum and well, the crypto in general, and I think the loom is gonna go up because of it. Obviously though, there's that staking thing which might devalue the second loom layer thing, but I think loom is probably gonna be one of those uh, better bets. And same vein engine, also a very strong Ethereum token, a lot of adaptation in Minecraft and gaming in general, and I'm gonna be seeing it as a pretty safe investment. So that's also something that I've accumulated. Then we have Maker, I think decentralized finance. It's also going to be a big theme in 2020 along with cross partnerships. So um, then I think that's why it's also belonging there. It could go massively up actually more as a decentralized services become more uh, sustainable and easier to use and cheaper to use. That's a very key point. So I'm going to see Maker and a lot of Ethereum tokens really benefiting from the, the fees going down eventually. Then we have Steam because of the Tron rumored partnership and smart media tokens coming out and all of those updates on Steam, the new Steam as it's called. I think that Steam going to be going up and I think they're fixing a lot of the issues like boarding new members to the service and etc. And that's a great thing. So I have a lot of promise for Steam because of that and I think it's going to be seeing some gains in 2020. And then we have Ethereum Classic, which is going to be benefiting some Ethereum stuff. I think some of the developers are going to be switching to because of the mining stuff. I don't think we're going to be seeing massive improvements on Ethereum Classic, but I'm going to see it's as a bit of a long-term investment, maybe beyond 2020, once Ethereum 3.0 launches or 2.0. I can't remember ever. <laughs> um, it's going to be probably seeing some stuff. And then we have Kamado as the last one on this list. Um, and I think it's just because of their... Um, atomic decks that they did and a lot of other updates that I have store, um, it's going to be seeing some rise. I think it's, Kamado is a really, really legitimate project right now and side chains and everything. Then we have kind of like the no gain, no loss barrier. And this includes a lot of stable coins such as Gemini and USDC. Uh, Bitcoin SV, um, I think it's just manipulated coin a lot, a lot of the time. So, um, it probably is going to be likely to go down, but I just feel like even though projects are delisting it, like Binance, it doesn't seem to be like you know affected though. So um, I think there is price is probably going to be staying the same. Then we have Stellar. I think Stellar uh, they did a lot of they did a burn this year. They might do another burn this year. I mean next year, and I think it's it's been decreasing obviously in price, but I think it's going to be just going staying more consistent on its current price. Going into 2020, I don't think that they have any massive updates in store, which would indicate it's like huge rise. So it's I think it's going to be relatively staying the same along with Doge. And then we have Zilliqa, which is also doing a lot of uh, big improvements in 2020. I think that could have been actually added into the uh, list above, but there was no space there. So it's kind of like kind of a bit of a, like a small wild card type of a coin. And basically, this is the plus side. And then we're going to be moving into the negatives. So this is the list for drop expected. So EOS has been tanking. EOS has a massive problems around as a chain. A lot of projects are already moving into um, like Wax and what others there are Boss and others. So uh, the the inter <laughs> the user bases and DApps are abandoning EOS because it's fucked up because of the Rex thing. So EOS is in trouble and I'm not going to be seeing it rising. I don't think that they're able to fix the thing. It seems a bit centralized and run by like Chinese oligarchy and exchanges. 
and I don't see how it will be able to recover. And the CEO is a really, really bad investment right now for long term. So I've been kind of buying Boss and buy, buying um, Wax itself. And same for Ripple. I mean, XRP is, you know, it's just going down. I mean, it's just being dumped. It doesn't really have real use cases. All the things that they're investing in, Cinnamon and um coil i don't think see much coming out of them because the ecosystems that they are working on are not really working it's not a really it's sort of one-ended economical solution and it's like every company that buys xrp is just dumping it afterwards it's just not it's just not going to be working it's just a pretty much a shill fest right now nem they have their catapult thing but they have been laying off devs and everything I don't think this is going to be, even though they're going to be doing a marketing push, I don't think it's going to be going up again. Maybe they're going to be breaking even at best um, by staying in the same numbers they are right now. But right now, there's so many better alternatives to, uh, you know, these uh, smart contract blockchains. Then we have Bomb. You know, no reason. They don't have use cases. They started a new coin project and they don't really have any way to bring Bomb in their Foldemore fold again anymore uh, this coin this is going to be inherently going down and there's now is the time to sell basically i don't it's so maybe we'll get a bit of a push in the bull market but it's not going to be going exponentially high moving on zcash 99 percent down guys 99 percent down and it's going to keep going down uh, there's nothing really proprietary about the project um it's run by a bit of banks as well kind of shady stuff and I don't like their um, interactions and p partnerships, what they have truly. So I don't see any promise on this project either. It's going to go down. Um, Electronium, um, same thing. People are getting it and people are dumping it. Um, their mobile revealments and all of those things. I don't think that they bear a lot of fruition. Um, it's not a investment coin by any means, even though it has a lot of people using it as a market option or you know merchant option it doesn't mean that it's going to be a great investment it might do a lot of good in terms of adaptation but it doesn't support smart contracts or things like that so there's not many things you can really build around it and Lisk also did a layoffs i think a couple of weeks ago massive layoffs on their company and it's also one of those smart contract chains which came out along with nem and all, all of these things and there's just better alternatives to that so there's no reason to do anything with it. Sia coin, also another debt coin from the past. It's not going to go anywhere. Then we're going to be looking at the list that coins are going to be dying or doing exit scams. So we have Rapids. Rapids have been inflating like hell and their inflation rate is so fucking high. And there's like no exchanges where you can basically sell it anymore. Nobody's buying it. So it's a complete uh, waste. And this tipping thing, they've been just been raining it all over on their discords and telegrams and people are dumping it i dumped it because it's not going anywhere at some point i was thinking like maybe this will work but when you give majorly your uh, coins away by free i noticed that it's just going to be attracting a lot of spammers and people like we're just going to be dumping it so this project is not going anywhere it's also going to be dying in 2020 so bail out now substratum it's dead horse i think it's Almost pointless to have it here on the list, but it's dead coin. Sell it now, even if you have it. Libra, I don't think Facebook is able to push it out. I think it's also going to die. Storm app, I think also there are much better alternatives to their system. Bitcoin private, another scam coin, which is also like literally on one exchange anymore. Yeah, which is Trade Shizoshi, which is pretty much a scam exchange in itself. And Strong Hands, they did a swap uh, this year, like 10 to 1 or something like that, and nobody's buying it. So, um, And that's pretty much the dead list. Then we have our last thing, which is the wild cards, master nodes, and privacy coins. So let's start with wild cards. Wild cards are basically coins which could go up and down really, really hard. Uh, uh, hard to say which is going to happen to them. First of all, we have Beatscoin, which is the Vipervid platform that they have, which is a music video site. It go, could go to basis and could make Bitcoin go up in price or it done. Um, they need more use cases and, you know, reasons to basically buy this coin within the service itself to create a more value. And if they manage to do that, if they manage to improve the platform, they have pretty good base layout and concept. And I think it could go to places if they manage to do those things, it could go, you know, go up. Then we have BitTube, which is exactly the same as Vibracoid's plan, but it's been tanking a lot. 
in prices and it's really hard to see it like breaking the mainstream with their BitTubers platform, which I don't frankly seeing happen. I, I'm pretty skeptical about them right now, but they could pull it off and become more mainstream. Um, they just failed to do that extension thing on big websites and promoting it on there. So I just, they just failed at marketing, to be honest. I was very keen on this project early on on my uh, YouTube career and, you know, crypto when I started kind of, but it's been just uh, not very promising what they have been updating. And I think they should have just sticked out to the original video platform instead. And then we have the bombs, a Zio token. And as I said, it's a good investment because you will be getting uh, dividends on other coins. So that's why it's on the list, but, and those coins might be turning out to be good uh, or not. Then we have Nimic. Nimic is transitioning to proof of stake, which could deflate the price quite a lot. Let's see what's going to happen. But there's a lot of like very promising dApps and development already in Nimic, which I actually like. Their wallets and everything. And I just kind of like the project a lot. And I think that if they do very well in marketing, I think that we could see this coin becoming a bit more prominent. Same with Ravencoin, very popular among um, developers, their roadmap looks good. They have good plans coming up. So Ravencoin is another wild card. It could go back to eight cents, four cents. You could see a double the amount of rise from its current price. So um, I still hold Ravencoin, and it's one of those things that I'm looking forward to. Then we have Clayton and Telegram's Ton, and Clayton is by Kakao Talk, which is the biggest messenger app in Korea. And there's already dApps in Clayton and the Ton Telegram. These are integrations to masses of people uh, by implementing wallets inside their, um, well, their apps. And they have already like a user base, which is millions. So, um, and both of these, I think Clayton supports smart contracts and tokens. There's a lot of apps already. Um, there's a Korean app, which is a region blocked in Google. I can't remember right now, but um, looked okay. Um, and tube, yeah, that's what it's called. So um, Clayton is something that I'm looking forward to. So I see the bit of wild card and Telegram's ton as well. These could have massive implementations because of their sheer volume of users that they have throughout their messaging platform. So that's why I think they have much promise. Then we have T Fuel, um, their Sliver TV thing, pretty nice progress and. Um, well, they've been doing really well and they've, they've been delivering their ICO things and they're growing their platform and it's, you know, being integrated and supported by Twitch and their own chain and their ecosystem of leasing stuff like internet, which it's, it's pretty good. And then we have Videocoin, which is another um, platform where you can lease your computer, um, you know, resources and also internet. So, and you get video coin exchange is a bit of like a, you know, market sharing thing. I have a video about it on my channel where I've talked about it. I think in some airdrop video, it's um, in KuCoin. And I think it has a lot of promise. It's a bit of a wild card project once again. And if they get the user base they need, it could become pretty good. And then quickly about decent masternodes, the ones that I see promise in and ones that I'm interested collecting masternode on on are Cinevate. Zcoin, Horizon, Tomochain, and StakeNet. Uh, these uh, just have more development on them. They look more professional, um, and they just seem to be much more better than the other Masternode platforms. These have use cases. Cinevate has a burn system. Zcoin is uh, on a very, very powerful app on Thailand, which is used by like thousands of retailers. So you can basically walk into many stores and pay with Zcoin. Horizon also has a lot of good technology. Tomochain is very popular in Vietnam and Japan. They have partnerships with Neo and StakeNet also has a lot of platforms working out and things that they are doing. And lastly, we have privacy coins, Pirate Chain, Nix, Pivax, and Spectrecoin. I think these are the most interesting uh, privacy coins out there, which are developing stuff. I don't really see that much appeal to things like Masari or Monero. I don't, Monero might see a bit of a gains, but I think these are ones that have most interesting development, especially Nix and Pivax, which have places to go. And obviously a lot of these projects like Pivax are doing partnerships a lot too. And that's pretty much my rundown. If you care, if you decide to, 
uh, buy some of these coins. I'm going to leak some exchanges down below, which you can use and support me by doing so. And let's see in like at some point I'm going to do a report in Twitter or somewhere and see which of my predictions were wrong or good. It's always nice to see if I was a total failure or if totally well. We will see. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys next video.